and consider the profit and the loss, that's the way we work today, isn't it? That's what we're accustomed to. And when we do all of those machinations there, then we decide, do we accept or do we reject that offer? Now, I'm going to make a confession to those of you here this morning. I absolutely hate it when somebody comes up to me and says, will you do something for me? I really don't like that because they're asking for a commitment from me before I know exactly what they want. And they give me no chance to think about it, to consider whether I want to do it or not. But when God said, whom shall I send? Isaiah never asked, where am I going to be going? When am I going? Where am I going? Are terribly important questions because they're questions that involve planning and direction and goals. But it's not a question that Isaiah or Samuel or Peter, none of them, asked. He just said, they just said, send me. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter when. Here I am. Use me. Send me. Folks, that's not the way I work. And that's not the way most of us work. That's not the way the world around us works. Perhaps it's the very reason why we seldom feel we have been called to anything. Ask somebody who's a, a member of a particular church why they are a member of that church. And I went back through my 48 years in ministry thinking about this and the answers that I've heard. And there are a lot of them, but there are three that really jumped out at me. First one is, well, we looked around and this one just suits us. That doesn't say a whole lot, does it? It just says, I'm comfortable here. And then the second one is we like the people. They're friendly. And I think that would probably be the answer that visitors to Central Christian Church would give because of our hospitality. But the one that I like the best is the one that says the sermons don't put me to sleep too often. There's always that caveat, too often. But I ask you, when was the last time you heard anybody say, I'm here in this church because God called me and sent me here? And not just this church, any other church. Where is the passion? Where is the amazement? Where is even the fear and the trembling before God of perhaps hearing that call, whom shall I send? God said in the temple, and Isaiah had no time to ask where he was going or how he planned to get there before he just popped up and said, send me. Now, I, on the other hand, we, I suspect, on the other hand, we need to be thinking constantly about where we're going, where we've been, you know, we seem to know about our goals. And will this request take us where our goals want to be? We want to survive. We want to eat. We want to sleep. We want to work. We want to take care of our family and all of that. And you know what? It takes a lot of attention to planning and goals. Yet, when God asked Isaiah there in the temple, or Samuel there in the sanctuary, or Simon in that boat, that call blocked out all of their concerns and their thoughts for their family. And they left whatever existence it was they had enjoyed just for the sake of following that call that grabbed them so strongly. These were not well thought out decisions. They were not rational responses. Folks, when those three and the fellows with Peter were asked that question, 
It was an instantaneous answer. It was more like an obsession. Consider, consider this possibility in the year that we live in. Not in the year of the death of kings, not in the year of corrupt priests, not in the year of a lousy catch of fish marked down in Snow Lake, but in this year of economic uncertainty, of political garbage, in this year of pressures and COVID and all that that has brought to us, in this year of overloaded schedules, in this year which, if you think about your life, Going back all the way as far as you can remember, this year, last year, hasn't been a whole lot different, has it been? The obstacles, the problems, yes, they've been unique. But life has always been full of obstacles, full of problems. And, you know, 2021, 2022, they're no different than any other year. We've had to face those obstacles and problems. And consider the possibility now, just think about it, that God stands in front of you, in front of me, in front of us as a congregation, somehow, somewhere. Maybe there in the form of someone familiar, or it might be in the form of someone totally, totally, unknown to us but that figure looks at me and you and us straight in the eye and says whom shall I send if you want if you're ready if you have time if you think about it and decide that that following is okay for you to do now that's great but of course you could always do it later but that's not the way God put it to his three people there in Isaiah, was it? They didn't have time to think it over. And if you find the possibility of hearing these words in your life that's already so overloaded that you hardly have time to breathe, if you find the possibility of hearing those words as frightening as I do, then you need to know, folks, that we're in good company. For that is the very same fear that we would have that drove Isaiah, that drove Samuel, that drove Peter and Andrew and James and John to their knees. And that question changed those men forever. And because of the possibility of such a change that is a personal, total makeover is possible, such a thought and a possibility is terrifying and amazing. Yet all of us, every one of us, have lived too long without any real amazement in our life, probably. <coughs> in our life as God's creation and in our life as a church. Folks, if being a part of the church here on this corner or down the street at Lamaster in that church on that corner or over there in Union in that big beautiful church over there on that corner, if people are content just to be there for a while because it suits you and suits them, then the church has dark, gray, bleak days ahead unless unless we can all see the possibility that in this very ordinary year, no different than any other year, just the circumstances of 2022, we might look up from figuratively washing our nets or wake up from a sound sleep looking up into the top of the sanctuary and we might hear a familiar voice that says to us, come on gang, there's more to it than this. Whom shall I send? God still very clearly says that. And I believe, I believe so truly that the yes is within each of us yearning, yearning to break through. 
I believe that our potential to say yes to God with passion, with excitement, with astonishment, and yes, even with fear, does exist and live within each one of us. It exists within us because we wait for that unexpected moment when we might hear God's word echo through the heights and the depths of our lives. Whom shall I send? And we will answer. Well, that moment when we give our answer is going to change our lifetime. That one little moment is what God put us here for. That one little moment is what he put a group of people looking at Central Christian Church almost a hundred years ago. <coughs> That's why we're here. And just like they said, we have the choice. And what are we to say? Here I am. Send me. Think about Isaiah this morning. Think about Samuel. Think about Peter. And his fisherman brother. And his fisherman friends. And know beyond any shadow of a doubt. But all of that isn't just a Bible story that we find in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's a story of why God has us here in the middle of all the beauty and all that He has given us. God still says, many, many years later, whom shall I send? Will you pray with me? Loving God, God of all creation, we confess this morning that we have seldom heard your call in the depths of our busy, busy lives. We've not been struck speechless in your presence, nor very frequently have we left all to follow you. Oh God, help us to learn to be followers of your way and the challenges that we face of daily life, just the stuff. And those times that sometimes threaten to undo us, when we're overwhelmed and when we're without hope. Lord, let us hear your word of comfort. And above that, Father, help us to hear and act on your call to discipleship. And God, give us strength and the courage to follow you wherever, wherever you lead us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.